My name is Adam Harrison, and I'm about to turn 46 this year. I work in sales at the U.S. branch of a French electronics manufacturer. I've always enjoyed leveraging my French language skills, which I excelled in during my student days. It's fulfilling work. When I was younger, I spent about three years posted at the company's headquarters in France, and I've returned several times for training and business trips. Despite leading a busy life, I never made time for romance, and I remained single even after turning 45. However, fate had other plans for me last year. On my way back from visiting a client, as I walked down the main street in front of the office, a large man in front of me suddenly collapsed in pain, clutching his stomach. I rushed to his side and asked if he was okay, but he seemed to not understand my words. Speaking to him in French, he explained that his chest hurt and asked me to call an ambulance. I dialed 911 on my mobile phone, and while I was on the call, a sophisticated woman in her 60s approached us, asking what was happening. I explained that the man spoke only French and was having chest pains. She identified herself as a nurse and took charge, asking the man about his pain and checking his pulse. When the ambulance arrived, she relayed detailed information about the man's condition to the paramedics and accompanied him. I was impressed by how efficiently she handled the situation. I later encountered her again when my father, who lived alone, was hospitalized for colon surgery. She happened to be the nurse assigned to my father's room. Oh, you're the one from the other day. What a coincidence. Thank you again for your help, I said gratefully. Same here. Is that man all right now? Yes, thanks to you calling the ambulance quickly, I replied with a smile. You're very good at French, she noted. Not really. I'm self-taught. I've always been interested in French because I enjoy watching French movies and TV dramas. I learned by watching French language programs on YouTube and buying books. That's wonderful. It seems you can speak French too. I work for the U.S. branch of a French company, so I can speak a little. Have you been to France? She asked. Yes, I have, I replied. She had also been to France on a trip. From then on, whenever we saw each other, we started talking more. Her name was Susan Miller, and she was almost 60 years old. She had a bright personality and a beautiful smile, and talking to her was always enjoyable. I had always wanted to talk more with Susan. Looking back, I realized I had fallen for her at first sight. The age difference didn't matter to me. She was incredibly attractive. Through more conversations, I learned she was divorced and currently single, with her daughter already married and living on her own. I felt it wouldn't be a problem to ask her out. On the day my father was discharged from the hospital, I mustered the courage and asked Susan for her contact information. She happily agreed, and we exchanged details. Once home, I wasted no time and invited her out to dinner. Since then, we've enjoyed several dinners and movie outings together. The more I got to know her, the more I was drawn to her charms. Susan was kind, caring, always cheerful and positive. Talking to her healed and energized me, even when work left me tired or troubled. About six months into dating, I proposed to her. Susan, will you marry me? I asked as I showed her the ring I had prepared. She teared up and asked, are you sure you're okay with someone much older like me? Age didn't matter to me. I wanted her. I can't imagine being with anyone else. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I reassured her, holding her hand. With tears of joy, she replied. Thank you. I want to live my life with you too, honey. My proposal was successful. Susan didn't want a wedding ceremony, but when she turned 60 and retired from nursing, we took a two-week honeymoon to Bordeaux and Paris in France. It was a lavish trip to celebrate her 60th birthday and retirement. We stayed in luxury hotels and dined at three-star restaurants. Having saved quite a bit since being single until 45 and without any particular hobbies, it felt like a perfect way to start our new life together. Therefore, I could afford that extravagant trip. Susan was delighted, and seeing her frolic like a young girl made me glad we went. One morning, about half a year into our married life, I was called by my boss just as I was about to head to work. The president of an important client at our headquarters in France is coming to the U.S. with his wife. 
We're hosting a dinner party, and I'd like you to attend with your wife. My boss Ryan said, specifying the date. I'll let you know the place once it's decided. Understood, I replied, noting it down. Suddenly, Ryan laughed. To think you'd have a wife, huh? I thought you'd never get married. Good for you, finding someone with peculiar taste. His scornful gaze met mine. Ryan wasn't around the same age as me, but he always boasted about his much younger and beautiful wife. He constantly belittled me, suggesting I must be lonely being single at my age or that no woman with peculiar tastes would marry someone like me. To still hear such things even after getting married irked me, but I kept silent. I worried about exposing Susan to potential unpleasant comments from such a boss. But it was an order, so I had no choice. The day of the dinner party arrived. I took Susan to the specified restaurant, an upscale steakhouse. After saying the name of the person who made the reservation, we were guided to a private room where Ryan and his wife were waiting. True to Ryan's boasting, his wife was indeed a slender beauty like a model. Thank you for your patience, Ryan, I greeted him. Ryan looked at Susan, who was standing behind me, and said, Adam, why did you bring your mother? You promised to bring your wife, didn't you? Hearing those words, anger rushed to my head. He had a malicious smile on his lips, probably knowing full well what he was saying. That level of harassment was almost impressive. She's not my mother. Let me introduce you. This is my wife, Susan, I said firmly. Susan offered a forced smile. But I could tell she was hurting inside. I couldn't forgive Ryan for insulting her. I decided then that if he made another disrespectful remark, I would not hold back my response. Soon after, our client Lewis arrived with a young employee guiding him. Nice to meet you, everyone. I'm Lewis. Excuse me, but my wife Emma is in the restroom. I'll introduce her later, he said in French. Ryan, his wife, Susan, and I all introduced ourselves in French. Ryan's wife appeared uncomfortable, not being fluent in French and barely speaking beyond stating her name, relying on Ryan to answer any questions from Lewis. In contrast, my wife Susan was so fluent in French that she could engage in a lively conversation with Lewis. This seemed to irritate Ryan and his wife. Anyway, Adam, I'm surprised you decided to marry someone so much older, Ryan suddenly remarked in English. No matter how well she speaks French, why would you choose someone who looks so mature? Everyone knows younger is better. Or do you have a thing for mature women? How old is your wife anyway? He was incredibly rude. Susan looks her age but possesses a beauty that comes with years. Her wonderful personality was why I fell for her. Being ridiculed with such shallow words felt like a total dismissal of my love for Susan. Excuse me, that's incredibly disrespectful, I retorted, my fists clenched in anger. What? You're talking back to your boss? Ryan smirked, clearly enjoying the moment. Not understanding the English exchange, Lewis looked confused. There are things you don't say, no matter if you're my boss, I continued firmly. It's okay, okay. You don't have to defend me. I knew what I was signing up for when I married you, Susan whispered, pulling on my sleeve. Just then, the private room's door opened and a woman entered, guided by a staff member. Emma, over here. Everyone, let me introduce you to my wife, Emma, Lewis announced, standing up. Emma was an elegant woman around 60 years old. She glared at Ryan and began to speak fluent English. I heard your conversation. I am very displeased. Apologize to them right now, Emma demanded. Ryan was speechless, caught off guard by her firm tone. I, I'm sorry, he stammered. Not to me. Apologize to them. Emma insisted, her anger unabated. Turning to us, Ryan apologized, Adam and Susan, I'm terribly sorry for my rude comments. Please forgive me. Emma explained the situation to Louis in French. Then, turning back to us, she said, What an incredibly rude thing to say. I refuse to dine with someone who speaks so thoughtlessly. I'm leaving. It was Emma who calmed down Lewis, who was still fuming with anger. Ryan quietly left with his wife. That's when we properly introduced ourselves to Emma. 
Nice to meet you. I'm Susan, Adam's wife, Susan recounted. Hearing Susan introduce herself, Emma's eyes widened. Susan, are you Susan Miller? Yes, I am, Susan confirmed. Oh my goodness, I'm Emma Anderson, your pen pal. Emma exclaimed excitedly, switching to French to continue. Really? You're that Emma? Susan looked equally surprised. They held hands, rejoicing over this serendipitous meeting. Listening to their story, it turned out they had met on an online forum and had been exchanging emails for over 20 years. Susan taught Emma English, and Emma taught Susan French. That explained why Emma spoke English. Susan was shy, so they had never video called before. That's why they didn't recognize each other's faces. What a coincidence! To meet a pen pal from overseas like this, Susan marveled. The dinner went well with Emma and Susan's conversation taking center stage. The food was delicious, and Louis and Emma enjoyed it too. That was really fun. I can't forgive Ryan's remarks, but I'm truly happy Emma and Susan met by chance, I reflected. Louis had heard about Emma's longtime pen pal before. I'm very satisfied. Having enjoyed the local cuisine, I'll mention this to our headquarters in France, Louis said after the meal. The couple left, and the reception seemed to have been a success. That night at home, Susan said to me, Adam, thank you for standing up to Ryan earlier. I acted tough, but if you had agreed with him, I would have been deeply hurt. I was relieved and happy you spoke up for me. Of course I would. No matter who he is, I can't allow anyone to speak ill of my dear Susan. But you mentioned you had prepared yourself for this when we got married. I didn't know you felt that way. It was a bit of a shock. Well, we do have a 14-year age difference. I don't look young, and the age gap is quite obvious, isn't it? I was ready for people to say things, but it was good that your parents agreed to our marriage without any objection. My goodness, that you needed such preparation to marry me. Again, thank you for marrying me, Susan. That's nothing compared to the happiness of being with you, she said, smiling warmly. Seeing her smile, I felt even more affection for her. A few days after Louis returned to France, I received news that a major deal with his company had been finalized. He had insisted on sending his regards to me. It seems Lewis also reported Ryan's inappropriate comments to our headquarters, resulting in him being demoted to a regular employee. I was promoted to manager in his place, reversing our positions. Since that day, he has never looked down on me again. He became quite subdued, showing respect towards me, which was satisfying. Susan and Emma continued their friendship through emails and calls. Susan is now planning a trip to Leon, where Emma lives. Seeing Susan excitedly talk about it, I wanted to continue to protect her smile. I want to make her happy, that's what I thought. 